Um, in this example, guys, uh, we have an airplane that's flying due east at 323 miles per hour. If there is an air current of a bearing 60 degrees at 15 miles per hour, what is the final speed and bearing of the airplane? So the first thing you guys want to do whenever you have a word problem is to draw the picture, right? So um, I can represent, now we have a bearing, so I'm going to do my little northeast southwest thing, right? It's going due east, so I'm going to say, all right, let's do that. Let's say that's going to be, so that's going to be 323 miles per hour. I'm going to skip the units for a second and just do the 323. All right. Um, and that's it. So again, we need to understand from a vector, what are all the things we learned last class period? We learned direction, the initial point to the terminal point, right? We're starting here. We're going to go here. Agreed? That makes sense in the context of the problem, right? Do going due east. We understand we have a magnitude. Well, the only other value we have for the magnitude is going to be 300, the, how speed, how fast it's going, correct? We don't know how far it traveled, because we don't know the time. But we, so we can just apply like 323, like the, far, the faster you're going, the bigger the vector, right? If you went three miles per hour, we'd give you a little short one. Agreed? We can like magnify it that way. And then the only other thing we learned how to do is also find the angle. So what would be the angle of this vector here? Well, here's the vector due east. The initial side and the terminal side are the same thing. Zero, right? So we have the magnitude and we have the angle. Does anybody remember a vector that we could do from there? Remember, hmm, I don't know. The magnitude of a vector times the cosine of the angle times the sine of the angle. Does anybody remember that form? Right, we learned three forms to write a vector. We learned from our initial point and our terminal point. We learned how to component form, linear combination, as well as when given a magnitude and an angle. So any vector can be written in terms of its magnitude and its angle. So let's label this. Since this is an airplane, let's call this A, vector A. So let's say vector A. Um, so vector A has a magnitude of 323 and has an angle of 0 degrees. That means I can represent vector A as 323 times the cosine of 0 degrees times the sine of 0 degrees. Is everybody OK with that? No? I mean, this is the formula. It's in your notes. OK? Now, typically what we want to do, one of the tips that I didn't have time to write to you guys, is always put your vector in component form. Now, do we know what the cosine of 0 is? Yeah. It's 1. Right? So again, remember when you have a scalar times a vector. Now this one's easy, but since it's kind of an introduction problem, I'll uh, just kind of show my steps. So there you go. Now we have the vector for the airplane. Right? You could probably skip some steps now that you guys have seen how to do it. Agreed? I just kind of did it step by step for you. So let's work to the next one, our current. Um, so an air current uh, has a bearing of 60 degrees um, at 15 miles per hour. So we have a bearing of 60 degrees. Sorry, 60 degrees. And then again, we have a speed here of 15 miles per hour. All right? OK. So can we represent that as a vector as well? Yes. yes. So we can come here and call this C. So let's say the magnitude of our air current is going to be 15. And the angle is going to be 60 degrees. No, no. What should it be? 30. 30. Your calculator doesn't know bearings. If you put 60 degrees into your calculator, it's going to calculate up here, right? Your calculator only does standard form. So we give you a problem in bearings, but you've got to only use the standard form. So therefore, we need to use 30 degrees as our angle. Now, we can write vector v as 15 times the cosine of 30 degrees times the sine of 30 degrees. Now, again, I'm kind of being nice. Did I pick something that was on the unit circle? Yeah, right? So we could just go ahead and evaluate this. Square root of 3 over 2, right? And 1 half. We don't need to plug in our calculators and use decimals. We could easily kind of go from here. And then let's just distribute the 15. So therefore, this is going to be 15 times the square root of 3 over 2, comma, 15 halves. Now, again, you could type that all into your calculator and get the decimals and all from there. But I'm going to save that for later. All right, so now we need to understand, well, what is it we're trying to find? So 
the, the question is saying, what is the final speed and bearing of the airplane? So what are we looking for? We have an airplane going like this. We have a wind coming in behind it, right at an angle. What are we looking for? We are looking for the speed and the bearing, but how can we go about that? Like what, what exactly is happening here that we're trying to find, like how can we go about and find that? Yeah, well it is pushing it, right? And again, just think about this real life, guys. You're running, right? If you have wind behind you, you know you're gonna go a little bit faster, right? And if, you have, if you've ever ran against the wind, you know it slows you down. Agreed? Like you felt those forces. So, you can think about we have the airplane, plus you have wind at its back. So really, we need to take this vector and, or take this vector and add it to that vector. Remember the, the way that we say we add vectors? Tail, head. So if we took this vector and we added it to the end of the other vector, we would have, uh oh, where'd it go, where'd it go? Oh, my red, oh, it's over there. We're gonna have what we call the resultant vector. And does it make sense that the resultant vector is going to be a little, have a little bit faster speed than the original speed and a little bit off course because it's getting kind of pushed? Yes? Yeah. So now we just got to figure out well, what is the resultant vector? Well, remember, resultant vector is going to be A plus C. So R equals, let's just kind of do this here, this would be 323 plus 15 squared of 3 over 2, comma, 0 plus 15 halves, which is going to be 15 halves. I have no, C is the current, air current. Now, well, again, we still got to answer a question. We just found the resultant vector. We still haven't answered a question, though. So the first question is, what is the speed? So speed is going to be represented by the what of the resultant vector? It starts with an M. Magnitude. Magnitude. So if we want to find the speed, let's call that S. So let's say the um, speed is equal to S. So therefore, S equals the magnitude of R. Now, yes, now I'm going to want to actually plug this into my calculator um, and use that. So what I'll do is I'll do 323 plus the square root of 15, close the parentheses. I'm sorry, not square root of 15, sorry. 15 times the square root of 3, close the parentheses, divided by 2. That's not right. Oh, I typed it in wrong. Plus 15 times the square root of 3. You should get 335.99. Now, do we want to, actually, hold on a second. Let's actually um, simplify this. So this is going to be 335.99, and this would be 7.5. Should we probably store that answer? Yeah. yeah. We don't want to round it, right? 7.5 is kind of easy to write, so I'll leave it there. So S equals the magnitude of R, which is now going to equal A, quantity A squared, plus 7.5 squared. So let's do alpha A squared plus, oh shoot, oh, come on, oh where are you, these calculators are broken, no, oh, alright, hold on a second, I got 323 times 15 square root of 3 divided by 2. Store alpha a. Okay, so we're going to do square root of alpha a squared plus 7.5 squared. And you should get 336. Anybody else confirm that? No? Nobody else got that? Yes? Okay, good. Because it's right. Or at least I've done the same thing. Now again, let's, let's make sure this makes sense. You're traveling 323 miles per hour. You have wind at your back. 15 mile per hour wind at your back. But not completely, so you're going, you're going faster, right? You're not going 15 miles per hour faster because it's not like all pushing you, right? But again, so does that make sense in the context of the problem? Yes. What happens if you get like 3,000 or 3? 
you probably typed in something wrong, right? So don't submit that. Realize, I'm like, oh, my answer doesn't make sense. Let me go back and recheck that. It's very easy to type in things into a calculator and get it wrong, right? So just be careful. All right, so that's going to be our result. That's going to be our speed. Yes? These represent R. S is equal to the magnitude of R. Okay. Now we've got to figure out the bearing. Now the only thing we've known how to figure out the angle is this formula. Tangent of theta equals 7.5 over alpha A. Right? V2 over V1. Second component over first component. So in my case, I'll say, all right, well then theta equals. So I'm going to do the tangent inverse. I'll just write that because so many people still get this wrong. Tangent inverse of 7.5 over stored A. So let's do tangent inverse of 7, bless you, 7.5 divided by alpha A. And I get 1.27. So is that, I'll just leave it at 1.279. So is that my bearing? Well, bearings are from due north, guys. 1.27 degrees. Is that where the plane's going? No, the plane's over here. Right? Oh, that's right. So that is the angle in standard form. I need to figure out the angle from due north. Right? It asked for the bearing. It didn't ask for the angle in standard form. So therefore, if this from here is 1.27, I just got to subtract that from 90 to get my angle. So I just do 90 minus that last answer. And I say a bearing of 88.721 degrees, or you could round that to the whole. Okay? That is a lot. It is a lot. Sounds like a good test or quiz question, don't you think? Yes. I mean, not like, I mean.